Good morning, HR Fest community. In this video, we are going to talk about an employer branding case study. My name is Adam Horvath from Brandfis, and today we have a special guest with us from the leading Norwegian employer brand agency, Videntify. Hans, Hello. it's good to have you here today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Uh, great to have you, and thanks for accepting our invitation. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure. I mean, anybody who wants to talk about employer branding, I I'm there. This is your first time here in Budapest? Uh, it, it is. Well, actually, I've been to Budapest before, but this is my first right. virtual time in Budapest. <laughs> Ho hopefully, we will meet personally here, here in our uh, capital. But um, yeah, thanks for being here. And uh, today we have uh, four cornerstones. Uh, the first one is uh, about uh, your case study, which was published on the website of the European Association of Employer Branding Agencies. And uh, if you can help us to understand the business case and where did you start the whole, uh, whole program, that would be nice. So what was the first step? Yes, definitely. And this business case is for a municipality uh, on the border of the biggest uh, city and capital of Norway, Oslo. So it's called Badum, and it has 12,000 employees. And a, a municipality, they employ anything from engineers to lawyers to, to uh, nurses to graveyard workers. I mean, it, it, I mean, of 12,000 employees, and it's basically every function you can think of. Now, being placed uh, next to Oslo, the biggest city, means that they're competing against a huge municipality. Oslo has 70,000 employees. Now, about them, they have 12,000. But that's not it. They also compete against all the biggest private employers as well. Because when they want engineers, they're fighting against the public sector, yes, but also the private sector. And as you know, in every country, there is a difference in salary level between the public and the private sector. So that makes the competition that much more difficult. So uh, they are basically in stiff competition for every person they want to recruit. So the business case, and it's, it's kind of strange to talk about a business case for, some, for, the, the, for the public sector, but obviously they spend money they spend money on, on advertising uh, or, or recruitment campaigns. Uh, you can also say that they spend money on salary, salary levels. So there is a business case there for them. And they saw that they had one uh, for some functions. They had trouble getting uh, people at all. But for other functions, they, they got a few applicants, but the quality wasn't good. In other cases, they got enough. It wasn't a problem. So this varies from function to function and unit to unit in this municipality. But they saw that they were kind of boring when it came to employer branding. They weren't interesting. They, they, they didn't get the attention of the candidates and, and they didn't, you know, didn't get the, the, the pulse of the candidates beating. They were just another municipality among many others. Because there, there's competition. I mean, they're, they're bordering against Oslo, the, the biggest, but also bordering against very many small municipalities who were equally, let's say, bland. So the problem was getting across with a message and being interested in giving candidates a good reason for why they choose to work for Badum and not all of the other great options. Because we have to realize that a lot of the options are great. The competition is stiff. There is, I mean, the, the, you need a really good reason for people vastly to, you know, to do, consider, I'll actually quit my job and I'll go for this unknown territory called you know, the, the competition out there. So that was basically the business need. They saw that one, they're probably spending too much money getting candidates. Uh, because they also use headhunters, which is extremely expensive. Uh, but two, they didn't get people at all. So at some point they were looking at, they were facing, I mean, they have a municipality, obviously, the politicians say you have to do this, this, and this. And at some point, they, I mean, they, they, they were looking at it, we can't fulfill our obligations because we don't have the people. So they obviously have to do something with their employer brand. So that was the background, basically, that they, they needed to stand out and be more succinct and more distinctive in their employer brand. You started an employer branding project uh, in an organization uh, above 10,000 employees. 
many segments they uh, they were focusing on on low cost because of maybe because of the public sector uh, what were the first steps how to start uh, doing employer branding in a large organization what were the first steps well the first steps is obviously getting uh, getting top management on board so that they actually um gave some funding to the project that is that is of utmost importance and in the municipality it's not only hr and communications but also the politicians so we needed them to say this is important so basically as, as cotter says create that sense of urgency create an understanding then just you know posting these jobs just doesn't cut it that was the first the most important thing now the second is research so we have to base this not only on our gut feeling and the gut feeling of the client in HR thinking of, yeah, what if we do this or that? No, that's not good enough. When you do something for a big municipality and an employer with 12,000 employees, you have to be much more thorough. So we did four bits of research, basically. One, we needed to know the current employees, those 12,000, what do they think and how do they feel about working for them? bad. That was the absolutely most important thing. Number two, we needed to know about the competition. So basically, what are they offering candidates so that we can say, okay, we're not going to offer the exact same thing. We're going to uh, offer them something different. Number three, what about the external candidates? What do they value? And the fourth thing we needed to know is where is this municipality going in the future? What is their plan 10 years ahead? Because that, that's a planning uh, horizon of a municipality. Now, in, in, in private sector, you're thinking of planning horizon of wait, one, two years, perhaps, but they have a plan going 10 years ahead. So that basically gave us a foundation for finding, OK, where are we? Where do we want to go? Where is our competition? And what do the candidates think? And when you look at all that research, you find somewhere, you can find some elements that can, that can make the basis of the EVP. So that was the most important thing, start with the research. And our research was quantitative, and we had a survey, a culture survey that this municipality had done before, but we looked at the culture survey with 10,000 answers. So wow, that, from yeah, 12,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah, from 12,000, yeah, 10,000 had answered. It's what incredible. is the secret? <laughs> tell, tell us uh, how, how to engage employees to feel, feel, feel the service. I don't know. I, I, I guess threaten them with them not giving them a salary. I have no idea actually how they got the 10,000 answers. It's, it's incredible. I've never, it's unheard of. Uh, but it was a great understanding of the culture there uh, of the municipality. Uh, but we also did qualitative research with workshops across all functions. And the important thing is, and, and this is vital, you can say with 12,000 employees, with so many functions and such a complex organization, there are a lot of people who are going to say it's going to be impossible to find a common EVP. And I'm sure everybody's heard of it and everybody works in a big organization thinks the same thing. And yes, of course, you're going to find differences between a lawyer and an engineer and a nurse and so on. Of course, there are differences, but there are also commonalities. And the whole point of this project was finding those commonalities and ensuring that yeah, we have a lot of things in common. And if we find something that really is at, at the root of this muni municipality that we all agree on and that has some sting to it, that's much more interesting than having a fragmented employer brand. Because if, if we only looked at the differences and try to adapt to every function, there wouldn't be any commonality. You wouldn't get the economies of scale that you need in a big organization like this. So that is one tip to everybody. Don't look for the differences, but try to find the commonalities. And that's what we did. So we did that's a lot like, of research. Sorry, I, I think now everybody's super excited about, about uh, the, the, the final uh, common EVP. So please tell us what was yeah. the, the final result. Now the EVP, how we structured it, is, is a brand promise at heart and, and supporting traits. So the brand promise at heart, is, it's in Norwegian, but I'm going to translate it to English, but it's make your mark. Because the whole point 
about a municipality is obviously the pro-social motivation that you can do more than just giving the owners more revenue uh, or, or, or higher yield on their stock. So basically making your mark. And the important thing is, yes, you do that in every municipality. But the great thing about this municipality is it's placed right next to the biggest one in Norway and surrounded by many small ones. So the whole point is, if you work as one of 70,000 employees in Oslo, you're not going to make your mark because nobody knows who you are. It's too big. But if you work in one of the small ones, if you're one of 1,000 employees, you don't have any firepower. You don't get anything done. It's too small. You don't have the budget. You don't have the technology. You don't have the tools. But if you're one of 12,000, it's just a perfect size. You're perhaps one of the 40 engineers working in a department. But you have technology. You have the funding. And this is a rich municipality. I forgot to say that. So you really have the possibility to make your mark because of the great size, the ideal size. And that was the basis of the EVP. Did it work? Well, it struck a chord internally. And that is the whole point. We did a lot, we spent a lot of time on internal research. So we knew that when we came back with this EVP, we had a good hunch that it would resonate with them. And it did. Everybody said, yes, this is us. And that is so important, the internal implementation, getting everybody and getting, we had 600 uh, of the recruiting managers. Uh, I mean, we did training with them and gave them an understanding of what does this mean? And they all said, yes, this is us. This is definitely us. And it sets us apart because uh, not only did we implement this through, uh, through what we said, through copywriting, but also through visuals. We, I mean, I don't know what it was like in Hungary, but in Norway, all the municipalities in their images, they have either smiling people, nothing wrong with that, but it's all, that's all they have, smiling people or pictures of the nature in that municipality, because nature is extremely important in Norway. It might be in other countries as well, but that's all they had. So there was no distinction in the visuals either. So we said, let's do something not only with the copywriting, but also with the visuals. So 20 different motifs, double exposure. So it's a technique used in photography that is really cool that nobody else uses. That really also set us apart, which underlined the whole point of making your mark because we had employees and the double exposure of the mark they made. That was a really cool thing too. Also resonated going from some boring, I mean, people smiling, it's fine, but it's kind of boring too. So going from not only great copywriting, but also new visuals, it got people excited. And you need to excite people with new employer brand if you want them, if you want to get them to use it. So that was extremely important. But it also did external testing. And we had a campaign. This was for the, for the real estate department in this municipality, big, of course. And it, uh, we asked all the candidates who applied uh, this new position with Make Your Mark. Did it give an increased or decreased uh, wish to apply? And 74% of the applicants said that this new position gave them increased desire to apply to the municipality. And we also asked them, you know, what, what are your associations to the employer brand? What does this really mean to you? And they said exactly, it's, it's, as if we made it up, they said exactly what we wanted them. So it's a sense of it, it's actually join us and make your mark. Is it a direct translation? So people have an increased desire to apply, which is great because that means going back to the municipality spending too much money on advertising. This gives us an opportunity to reduce the spending because we know that people want to apply to a larger degree. That's the business case here. Can we actually reduce the spending? Now it, it takes Hans, time. Hans, just a, a, a short question. I really like your, your approach uh, with, the, with the main EVP, make your mark, because my understanding is that, that you reframed a disadvantage, disadvantage because you said there is a big competitor, a large competitor, Oslo, and maybe is a, this is a disadvantage for us being smaller. And you completely reframe. And what, what was uh, the, 
the, the, the reaction from, from leaders um, um, on, on this topic? Uh, did they like uh, the whole concept or uh, um, yeah. wh what was the reaction? No, but they, they, they did like it and they did see that uh, what could have been perceived as a disadvantage. I mean, because it's easy to say, yeah, but we're small. Oh, also so much bigger. But the thing is, big isn't always beautiful. Uh, so we have to look at, of course, they have more money in total in Oslo, but per employee, no, they don't. So we, and, and also we have to find that, okay, we're just the right size. We're not the biggest, but we're definitely not the smallest. What are the advantages? And they were there and they really resonated with them. So yes, uh, it's a great trick. I mean, it's from the uh, old war heroes, or not war heroes, but philosophers in China as well, I think. I don't know if it's Confucius, but take the weakness uh, or take the strength of your, uh, of your enemy and make it into weakness. And that's what we did. And it really resonated. It resonated internally. They really thought this is us. It really works with the external target group. So that also is, is a great success. Now, obviously, we, we need time to see the benefits because this has been implemented a year. It's been the year of Corona, so things are completely different. We can't compare 2020 and 2021 with 2019 and 18. We can't yet. But so far, we know that uh, it resonates with the target audience in a really good way. So we have great hope that we can show the business value in the years to come so that we can reduce spending or actually keep up the spending but get better candidates and actually fill the positions that they weren't able to fill uh, in the previous years. All right, um, great concept, so congratulations. And finally, what were the results? You mentioned uh, some, some numbers, but uh, maybe from business side, uh, what was your, uh, uh, your favorite KPI? What well, were the results of the one whole interesting. program? Yeah, one interesting result that we saw, one thing is that uh, people associate the right things and they have an increased desire to apply. That's important. But an interesting, uh, interesting result is conversion. Because the whole point of being more clear on your employer brand is getting the right people to apply. And those people who don't feel comfortable or don't or aren't triggered by the CVP not to apply. Because that's the whole point. You want more of the right candidates and less of the, of the wrong candidates. Because if you get a lot of wrong candidates, basically you're attracting them on the wrong premises, you're gonna have a higher turnover. So that's not what we wanted. And we saw on a comparable campaign, this was for teachers. We saw that the conversion of people clicking on the ads and actually applying and getting hired was much higher than before, an increase of 35% in that conversion. So basically, wow. you know, a lot of people, a lot of people look at, oh, we got more applicants. I don't think getting more applicants is a good KPI at all. It just means more administration. You want a higher share of relevant applicants. And that's what we got. in 35% increase in the conversion. And that is really, I think, a great result because we are more clear and distinct in the communication, which makes people, it makes it easier to say yes or no to the municipality. And that's why you want, that's a strong employer brand. If you have a strong employer brand, it's easy to say yes. And it's also easy to say no. That, that's quite important. That's perhaps a, another important lesson for everybody working with employer branding. You have to accept the fact that people can say no to your employer brand. If nobody can say no, then nobody can say yes. You're going to be completely uninteresting if nobody can say no to you. It's very hard, you know, working in HR, you want everybody to like you, but no, do not go that way. You have to accept that somebody is going to say no. That's quite important. And we saw that a lot of people did say no, but more of the right people say yes. That is, to me, a great success, actually. Cool. I, I really like this idea to help people to say no, because, because if, if, uh, if you can uh, achieve this goal, you, maybe you have your own character and it's important to, to be special on the market and, uh, and make a good match with the right candidates and not with everyone. Exactly. Cool. Um, if, you can, if you can share with us um, 
as a, a, a final advice. So if I'm working in a large organization, thousands or maybe 10,000 of people, I try to uh, roll out a, a new Empower Brand initiative. Um, what, is, or what are your suggestions, your tangible, uh, practical tips and tricks? Please help us. Well, <laughs> the mo the, this is not the, the trick people want to hear, but it takes time. That is extremely important. But you need, I, I think actually, I mean, I'm from Scandinavia, a very egalitarian country, but I still think despite that, that getting top management on board, having them be the brand champions of the employer brand is extremely important. And we got the politicians and the top management to actually endorse this. And that has been extremely important, but we are not nearly finished with the internal or the external implementation. This is gonna take time. But one tip, get top management on board. Extremely important. A lot of people talk about, yes, you have to engage all the employees. Yeah, you do, but you're not gonna do that without the top management. And why is this important? Employer branding is an HR task, right? <laughs> no, it is not. That's not saying, yeah, communications is a communications task. No, it isn't. HR and employer branding, talking about your employer brand is the responsibility of everyone because you're going to say the most, the critical success factor for all organizations, public and private, I'm going to argue it's people. So if not everybody is engaged in getting the right people in, well, you have a weak organization. That's why everybody has to be involved, not only HR. Cool. Great insight, great initiative, and uh, congratulations on your uh, fantastic results. Uh, for you. those who uh, want to know more about this case study, uh, we will link uh, next to the video, um, the, the whole written case study on the website of the European Employer Branding uh, Agency Association. So Hans, Thank you very much uh, for being here. It was a great pleasure and uh, an amazing uh, uh, takeaways. So thank you very much and see you next time at uh, HR Fest. Thank you for so. being here. Thank you for having me. A pleasure. Take care. Bye. Bye.